and so far I hope they aren't already It's time, buddy. Thank you. Yes, buddy, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to hustle and flow our way into the final half of our really big shoe. Uh, and it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new low fat and high fiber, like so much high fiber, you're going to shit a hole through your pants. That's how much, like a cannon on a pirate ship. That is how fast that's coming out. Your butthole is going to look like our background right now. Just a flashing light in a dark, scary-looking hole. That's how a high fiber this is. Movie of the week! And this week, we continue to celebrate the life and films of legendary Spanish director Pedro Almodovar by watching 1950s monster movies because uh, Bonnie and I don't know Spanish. And this week we discuss the 1953 American sci-fi film Ada Abbott and Costello Go to Mars. Oh wait. It came from outer space. And Bunny Ooh. Okay, I was going to say uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene's asshole live cam, but uh, your answer is, I, I think they're both equally good. Bunny. Oh, yeah, the uh, we have a Pope on Film Facebook group where we just post memes and articles, and it's wonderful, and you should join. But yes, the uh, landlord who found a pregnancy test in the trash and was deciding whether or not to kick the woman out because she was pregnant. That was... Hell yeah. They did? Oh, wow. Okay. That's what I want to be next year for Halloween. I want to be a pilgrim and I just walk around normal as myself until I see someone in Halloween dressed as a witch, at which point I try and burn them alive. I think that's a it's a it's a concept piece. But funny for those people who maybe Yeah. Ooh, okay, that's another one. You go as a priest and you just act like yourself. You normally go about Halloween, but if you see anyone dressed as a devil or a demon, you start throwing water in their face and screaming, the bag must be on the floor. That's another good concept outfit. Bunny, for people just joining us for the first time and are probably really confused, would you care to expand on how we ended up here celebrating a Spanish director by watching 1950s monster movies?
Yes. Perfect. That makes total sense. It's very meta of us. It's, it's a very... I think so, too. I think so, too. Pedro, so we're watching 1950s monster movies in celebration of Pedro Almodovar. It makes total sense. Let's talk about the man in question, Mr. Pedro Almodovar. You see, I consider myself to be a self-taught film historian. And I just know so much about film and filmmakers, film directors. And so I thought that, you know, writing up a quick biography of Pedro Almodovar would be pretty easy for me. And there's definitely not going to be any mistakes, wink, noise, touch, nose. So here is a, a short, brief summary of the life of legendary Spanish film director Pedro Almodovar. Pedro Almodovar was born in southern Taiwan. He began directing films in his native country before finally entering the Hollywood mainstream with the 1995 film Sense and Sensibility. Since then, his films have been dominating Hollywood, especially during award season, with films such as Brokeback Mountain, The Life of Pi, uh, and, and also, of course, his, his uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And then, of course, his biggest hit, Eric Bana's Hulk. Sure, it was controversial. Sure, not everybody enjoyed it. He took some really big swings when it came to that Hulk film. But I think that, you know, time will tell. Yeah. I still can't get over the fact that when they made the Incredible Hulk television show, that they named him uh, Dr. David Banner because they didn't want to name him Bruce because it was like the 70s and that was considered a gay name. That's fast. That blows my mind. That is absolutely fascinating to me. That, like, oh, I am the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> but my real name is Bruce. You know, like, it blows my mind. Dr. David Banner. Oh, wait, that wasn't Pedro Almodovar. That was Ang Lee. Fuck. Ah, I messed it up again. Well, there's no time to go back and to give you the right one. I'm sure next week. Uh, so similar. Honest mistake. I, I'm sure I'll get it right next time. So uh, let's move on. It came from outer space. What has been said about this film that hasn't been said about a billion other alien invasion movies? When you first see that spaceship, they didn't even try to cover up the fish hook that it is hanging from. You can clearly see it. You can. Yes, very much so. Yeah, yeah, really kind of dumb. The film takes place in Sand Rock, Arizona, which does not exist, although there is a Sand Rock Canyon, Arizona. But uh, I also don't give a shit. Oh, so we're moving on. I mentioned this in the first half of the podcast. Uh, how many 1950s and 60s science fiction films? Feature the trope of uh, the entire film starring chiseled jaw guy with pipe. And I saw this film and I'm like, oh man, this guy is just 
he could be the professor in any other film. And sure enough, he's the doctor in uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. So good for him. Good for him. But also... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Serious Phil Hartman. Yeah, I see that. Uh, one romantic evening, he witnesses an alien spaceship on what is clearly a fish hook. You can see it. You go back. It's a fish hook. You can see the fish hook above the spaceship. But I think this is one of those movies where it's in 3D, so you're not paying attention to the fact that it's just a gorilla suit with a porthole on his head, you know? One of those type of films where it's like, okay, this is just, this is in 3D, so we don't have to pay attention to the glorious mistakes. I would also like to take this time to say that 1953 was also the year that uh, Vincent Price's House of Wax came out. I love that movie so very, very much. Uh, one thing about Halloween now being done, I find it fascinating that every year during Halloween, Thriller plays constantly on the radio, and we have all just grown accustomed to Vincent Price saying, uh, Grizzly ghouls in search of blood to terrorize y'all's neighborhood. Like he says that in the song. And we're all just, we're all just okay with it. We're all just okay with Vincent Price just spouting street slang. But okay. Uh, funny. I've got a movie idea. Based on this film, I think it's a great idea. Okay? A small town in the desert where strange things keep happening. But the star of the film is the grizzled old sheriff of the town who doesn't believe anything is happening. And so, like, just a shot of this old guy asleep in his leaned-back chair at the police office. Oh, the phone rings. And he picks it up. An alien spaceship landed just outside of town? Well, fiddlesticks, how much have you been drinking? Lay off the bottle. Ha! What a crackpot. Hangs up phone. I'm going to go back to sleep. And it's a newspaper over his face. Wee, 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 wee. Wee, 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 wee. Phone rings. Hello? What? Zombies? Oh, hogwash. Zombies don't exist. This is clearly some sort of crackpot. I, I, I am hanging up now. Click. Goes back to sleep. Phone call. What's that? A hundred Bigfoots riding giant spiders? Oh, Balderdash! This is the 19th call about this today! You're all crackpots, hang up. So all the, like, supernatural monsters get pissed off because the grizzled sheriff doesn't believe him, so they team up. I, I imagine, like, a team of vampires being like, What the fuck is up with this guy? So, like, they, so they all team up to fuck with the sheriff. And the whole entire town that's been scared, ah! they just don't give a crap anymore because finally all the monsters have been like, oh no, fuck you guys, we're going after that sheriff, what an asshole. And so the town is just like, oh yeah, he's, he, he's a piece of shit, go ahead, you can have him. So that's the movie. Because I love those films, thank you, I love those films where one person witnesses something. I need to tell everyone. What? You don't believe me? Shocked face. Like, that's 
I would say that's 75% of every monster movie from the 1950s and 60s. There's always the first witness and they're a crackpot. Uh, anyway, I'm not good at summarizing plots, but I know someone who is. And he's waiting for you right now, Bunny. All you have to do is put your hands together and pray to him because God has the answers, okay? Jesus, which is how my kids pronounce Jesus. Jesus. But also you, Bunny. Why can you explain the plot of this complicated psychological drama known as It Came from Outer Space? Nice. They, yeah, they looked all right. Yeah. Like you do. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, that is the entirety of the movie. Yes. Very good, Bunny. Yeah. I, 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 if I had to guess, I'd say that the atrocious science fiction film Killers from Space which did not have, I'd say, half the budget that this week's film does. And also, it came out a year after this. I would dare say, having watched It Came From Outer Space a number of times, that I would venture a guess to say that Killers From Space was a small studio's attempt to cash in on It Came From Outer Space. Except with except with more ping pong ball eyes. I want to do a sequel to Killers from Space where you learn that all the aliens from Killers from Space came from a planet where humans evolved from Muppets. And that's why they all have those, you know, cookie monster eyes. Cookies! Oh! That's why the eyes are Did you know that there's currently a fetish for people to have sex while wearing the Scream mask from the ghost face mask from the movie Scream? Well, there is. And you know why I learned about that? Three months working at a Halloween store. Guess what sold out quicker than anything? Yeah, so whenever someone would come in looking for the screen mask, I would have to say, yeah, we're all sold out. Most places are sold out. I don't know why it's so popular right now. Yeah, isn't that something? Isn't that weird?
I hate movies where the aliens, here's an original idea, they're shapeshifters. Because I feel like, you know, uh, John Carpenter's The Thing aside, a lot of times that's just a cost-saving measure by cheap filmmakers. But, I mean, this movie's kind of fun in a bad sort of way. I bet this movie is a much better experience when you see it in 3D. When it came out, it was a 3D movie, but it just barely exists anymore. I believe that the Mei Hong Drive-In showed this movie earlier this year in 3D at their drive-in. But uh, don't quote me on that. But the only way to see this movie in 3D really is just to go out and find it. Did you know that the that the copy that you downloaded had uh, subtitles on it? I Well, I watched it on my VLC media player on my computer, and it immediately popped up um, closed captions on the bottom, but they weren't closed captions of the film. The captions were telling you fun facts about the movie. Yeah. And I, I, I tur after like 15 minutes, I turned off the captions and it's like, okay, I'm reading the interesting behind the scenes facts of this movie instead of actually watching the movie. So I turned off the closed captions, but I've never seen that before in a downloaded movie. I, w I was fascinated by it. But yeah, my VLC media player just instantly is set up to play captions and it started playing these captions and I was all confused because what was scrolling on the bottom of the screen had was not the dialogue I was hearing. But yeah, I, I find that absolutely fascinating. So yeah, that's this week's film. It It exists. It exists. It's fine. I love this outfit. It's got some uh, pink leggings, too. I'm wearing some boots with it. I love it. Because I I have superhero costumes, but I don't have... This is like my first lady superhero costume, and it's great. And I got it for 50% off, and then 30% off of that 50% off, which isn't 80% because math is fucking weird. It's 30% stacked on top of 50%, which is not 80%. But anyway, I got it for cheap, and I love it. Yay! I also got uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space popcorn! I love it. It's weird how that's popular. How is it that Killer Clowns from Outer Space has come back and is wildly popular and yet, not what I consider to be the better film, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. There's more Attack of the Killer Tomato movies, too. Uh, I mean, there wasn't a Killer Clowns from Outer Space cartoon for kids. In, in the, like, 90s. Anyway, that's all I have for this week's movie. It was pretty good. I liked it. And that's why Pedro Almodovar is an amazing filmmaker. Revolver. And you know who redid that film? The Beatles. Revolver. Um, what did you just say, honey? Oh, hey, uh, buddy, uh, uh, you don't have volume right now. How about that? That was some sports person's. Yes, it is unusual, but you know what's not unusual? This beautiful outfit that I'm wearing. Hello. I'm trying to give the fans what they want you know, the fan service that you have come to expect from. Oh, for those of you who are just listening on SoundCloud or Stitcher, which I, I guess is a thing, 
I am wearing a Scarlet Witch outfit and I look effing amazing. And apparently this whole time we've been recording this podcast, no one's been able to hear my co-host, but that's fine. Bunny, you move your mouth and I will give you words. Okay, so move your mouth. Just open and close. Hi, my name is Barney Williams, and I love this movie. It came from outer space, and um, it made it look so pretty, and I, I can't <laughs> wait for next week. Okay, so, buddy, what movie are we watching next week, which I believe is the finale of Buntober? That would be the finale. And we finish up strong by not watching The Skin I Live In. Okay. Starring Antonio Banderas as I think Banderas. some kind of a plastic surgeon of some sort. Uh, and just starts cutting on Penelope Cruz. Uh, so that that is our tribute to Pedro Elmondovar that we will be watching. And instead, we will be watching yeah, The Thing from Another World. The Thing from Another World. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Uh, I, I believe this to be John Carpenter's masterpiece. Yes. The special effects are incredible. It is so intense and in your face. You know and, that one. Oh, you know then that. which one are we watching? The, the the original um oh the yeah. shitty original oh yeah. okay then well that's fine oh man so anyway next week the thing from another world i'm really excited to get back to doing the podcast on a regular basis because uh i don't work like 40 hours at the halloween store getting misgendered anymore and so, yay! yay! I did make a lot of really good friends there. Yeah. A lot of them were high schoolers who worked there. That was a big shock. Hearing, hearing like, your employees talk, and it's like, how old are you? 16? Oh, I'm 18. I'm a senior. And I'm like, yeah, I'm 23 and not 46. I don't know how these rumors get started. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun didn't make me feel old at all these kids are just working so hard and then all i do is bend down and my knees scream <laughs> eventually when you get to your late 30s and early 40s that's when you develop screaming knees yeah which is a, a pretty sad thing that's why i'm taking uh zeljan's topacinative it's a pill for adults with moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis. When tumor necrosis factor blockers did not work well or cannot be tolerated. Yes. So next week, the thing dot 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 from another world. Is that what it's called? I believe it's called the thing dot 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 from another world. Kind of like once upon a time dot 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 in Hollywood. Does it have the dot dot dots? It may. Uh, let me see. The thing from another world. Okay, boom. Everyone says the thing from another world, but I'm pretty sure that like posters and stuff in some posters, or at least in the preview, I think it did say the thing dot 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 from another world. Or I may just be making this up. That's what I'm calling it. Yeah. The thing dot 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 from another world. Whether or not that's right, that's what I'm calling it. Next week, we will be discussing the 1950s original, The Thing, dot, 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 from another world. And uh, we're going to have another Jeff, another T-B-W-M-P-S-B-T-Y-B-R-S-L-D-T, which is what the kids call it, because yeah. that's bussin' respectfully. No cap, dead ass. So... Uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, remember, boys and girls and gender rebels, Weird Al Yankovic, Stone Cold Pimp. Yes. They don't ever forget that. And um, Five Nights at Freddy's is pretty good. I'm ex I, I, Next week, I will be 
sure to report bunny and tell you what movie i'm seeing at amc screen unseen cool very excited you know amc select theaters for five dollars you get to see a movie that hasn't come out yet that no one has seen a, a not sure what it's going to be but it's going to be pg-13 and it's going to be about an hour and 40 minutes not okay. sure what it is that's really exciting you're not going to know what it is until the movie starts. An hour I think and 40 that minutes? Hour and 43 minutes, I think. Well, you could look up the Marvels because they made a big deal out of its running time. They're very proud that it's going to be the shortest Marvel movie. Yeah, but most of the Marvel movies are like two hours and one minute. So that's not that's not the biggest thing. You know? Yeah, but I think it's probably clocking in at like one forty three. Yeah, so it. I don't want to look it up because I want it to be a surprise. Uh -huh. I think this is a really awesome idea. Anywho, that's next week. Now that I'm looking back at this week, Weird Al, Weather Apps, Bunnies Alive, Ong Lee, uh, Crackpot. I got to say, I think that this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. You think that it's a damn good episode. Okay, I agree. I, I feel the same way. But I didn't want to come out and just say that it's a, it's a, it was a great, wonderful episode. Because I feel like you're the person, Bunny, who makes that distinction and not me. And I don't want to step on any toes. But yes, I concur with your assessment good sir so until next week i am bunny williams and i am reverend may lynn and on behalf of natasha and uh, eleanor and maxwell and everybody else i just want to say thanks for listening and we will see you next week you godless heathens over here and then be louder and punch it out. Punch it. You could be louder than that. Come on, be really loud. Say it real. Nice. Okay, now say one for Max. And you. Donald Trump. And you, Donald Trump? <laughs> Eleanor, you have gone too far now. Okay, now you say one for yourself. Cupcakes. Any cupcakes? Okay. Do 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 Cut and print. That's a wrap. I look great in this outfit. Oh, the head thing is itchy though.